Hi everyone, welcome to episode 112 of the Let's Talk Yoga podcast. As always, I hope you are doing well. I wanted to do a quick solo episode because this topic has been on my mind and I know a lot of you are teaching asana as part of your yoga teaching journey and some of you practice have been practicing asana for a very 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 long time and there is there's a greater conversation I want to have on today's episode that I'll get to in a moment but before that just a couple of quick updates make sure you are signed up for my newsletter just make sure you go to the link in my Instagram bio or in this podcast description I have been consciously trying to step away from social media posting and get to more long form email content so just make sure you are on that I have a couple of free workshops that are coming up in Q2 and I would love for you to to have access to them so just make sure you've signed up for that newsletter my second update is at the time this drops later that week I will be heading into my ACL reconstruction and meniscus repair though the meniscus is really minor it's the ACL reconstruction that's the main one so I probably will have a slightly random podcast schedule for the next two weeks at least I may not drop an episode after this in the week after honestly I, I don't know what to expect post-op so I'm just gonna play it by year okay so in case you don't see an episode for a week just know that there's one coming I'm just taking a little extra time to get it done. Okay. So on that note, let's get into today's episode. Hi, my name is Arundhati and you're listening to the Let's Talk Yoga podcast. I'm an ex-Bollywood dancer turned yoga and wellness educator. I've built a six-figure business as an immigrant, woman of color yoga teacher with no business background, no handstands, pure instinct, and the free information found on Google. If you love doing yoga and you dream of teaching it someday, this podcast is for you. We go over everything from doing and teaching yoga to scaling a small business, living a modern yoga lifestyle, and so much more. You'll find interesting, fun, raw conversations along with some tips, tricks, strategies, and insights in this podcast. So grab your cup of chai and let's jump in. Now, just a moment ago, I was telling you about how asana is how a lot of us step into yoga. Asana is how we relate to yoga. And most of you teach asana as some part of your yoga teaching journey. And there is, of course, this huge debate in the Western yoga world about just yoga being more for the able-bodied practitioner in the average American vinyasa yoga studio. And now there is in the past few years, this whole movement, or if I may call it respectfully, a trend towards accessibility and, and people cashing into it. So while I personally believe that you know asana needs to be very adaptable, and that's how I grew up seeing it. Uh, the asana I saw was for everyone, no matter what age you were. But I want to bring up this this aspect of how do we practice asana? Are there approaches to asana? Because there are. And I want to talk about it very quickly because I think it will help you navigate not only yourself and set expectations for yourself in your yoga, but I think this is a conversation we should be taking to the students who come to your asana classes. Because I've been teaching for a long time now. I mean, long is subjective. And I've always wondered as a studio owner at Aham Yoga, I always have wondered why some people stick to yoga while the other people drop off. Some students don't come back after the first class. Some stay for a few classes and never come back. And then some stay for years on end and never stop. And some after years just plateau and drop off. So I'm very curious about what I call the customer psyche. Okay, in terms of how they relate to yoga. So I've been paying a lot of close attention to this. And I just thought that I'd come here and talk to you about it in case this will help you in your classes. Now, there are, of course, many variables at play, right? Like the interest level of the student, the teacher's ability to engage the student in a way in yoga, in a way that is uh, relatable. And then there are, of course, schedules and personality differences and preferences and socioeconomic factors and so much more. Right, The list can actually be very long. But what I want to share here is two approaches that I constantly remind students at Aham Yoga. 
Okay. There are two approaches to asana and you can extend this to greater yoga as well. And I encourage people to give it some thought and to take the approach that is suited for them in that moment in time. Okay. And having this conversation early with your students will help them navigate. Okay. Into deeper yoga and will anytime they have problems they run into, hopefully you having these conversations with them will be helpful. So at the start of an asana class, I take a moment to remind people that there are two main approaches, okay, and to recognize the approach that is more aligned with their worldview. The first approach is to grow your asana practice physically, okay. By this, I mean progressively challenging your body to go to grow into the next available asana. For example, think of it as Ardha Parshvakona Asana, half side angle into full side angle. Then from there into Baddha Parshvakona Asana, bound side angle. From there into Swarga Dvijasana, bird of paradise and so on and so forth. Just as an example. Now this can be done in a very thoughtful, progressive, structured, prop based practice. Okay, And needless to say, keeping the full view of yogic principles of the yamas and niyamas in your asana practice and a lot of yoga classes are structured around this generally. I'm not necessarily saying peak pose sequencing, but just getting people to work in a way that is you require a certain amount of willpower and energy and challenge. Okay, So not everybody, what you have to recognize is not every student who's sitting in front of you in a class is inclined to grow their asana practice this way. Okay, You have to take into consideration people's personalities. Some people will like to push and challenge their bodies in a very physical way. Okay, But there are many participants and the same participant could also be mentally and physically tired to, to give it that push on a particular day. Okay, So what I want you to ask people to recognize is, is their own personality. Do they tend to lean into enjoying the push and the challenge uh, more often than not? Then in that case, yes, they should be looking at growing their practice in a very structured way. Okay. And, and that's probably where they thrive and that's how they relate to their body. Okay. At Aham Yoga, we have organized the classes in terms of levels and numbers. And we, of course, needless to say, we always accommodate almost everybody in every class because we do know most people who walk into the studio pretty well. But know that it's not an approach. What I'm saying here is not an approach of just push, 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 go harder, go stronger every single day. You want to show them the other side, the softer side, the shavasanas, the restorative yoga, the prop-based versions also as part of their practice. So they're able to strike a balance. Okay. But if your participant genuinely likes to grow their asana practice, then they should be leaning into challenging themselves physically and moving to learn newer asanas. Okay keeping that whole mindfulness, being present and all the principles always in mind. Okay. The second approach is something that I do not think is spoken about often enough. Okay. There are so many practitioners, at least that I meet at Aham Yoga, who come to yoga just so that they can meet their health, wellness and fitness goals. These are not necessarily people who ever want to do a, a crow pose or bakasana or stand on their heads and or kick up in a handstand on a wall. To them, this is not only unnecessary, but it's also stressful and it doesn't serve any immediate result in their lives. So they are happy coming to class and doing just enough asana that challenges them to a good degree, but that engages them in a way where they feel more connected to themselves when they leave. So when we take this group and push them into approach one and start to physically challenge them in a way that they don't relate to, don't enjoy and don't see a need for, we start to alienate a lot of people from yoga. Okay. So I want you to Think about this for a moment and use these two approaches, Okay, really understand them in your own way and start to bring this conversation to the students themselves. Right? I always tell everyone at Aham Yoga that you get to decide how much you are investing today. Maybe yesterday you went at it okay, because you had slept well, you were fully recharged mentally, physically, but today may not be like that and that's okay. Okay, it's okay to be in approach one forever and then suddenly move to approach two and switch. It's not like these are labels for life. These are not even labels. Okay, so 
I have students who want to stay in level one on a Tuesday, Thursday, 6.30 p.m. because that's what works for their schedule and they're happy being there, right? So I just leave them a note saying that if you ever catch yourself feeling bored, stagnating, you're, you're wondering if there's anything more to learn, then know that there is. There are poses like physical practice you can learn more and then there are non-physical practice non-asana related things like pranayama and restorative yoga and meditation and other aspects of of yoga that you can go into so if you catch yourself being bored let's have that conversation but if you are happy here your goals are being met right then you do not need to ever worry about being in a class where you're trying to stuff your legs in on your arms for bakasana okay so the underlying non-negotiable for me in all classes is that we do our best to stay present and stay mindful of what we are doing and and keep the main goal and objective of yoga front and center and to never let it be about just a pose and it's not a measure of our self-worth and to experience the layers of our being. And, and I'm referring to the Kosha model here if you're familiar with that. And you can experience that whether you are in Vrikshasana tree pose or whether you are in Bakasana, okay, you can experience those layers of your being in all the poses, okay, and encouraging people to practice the inner yoga more than the outer yoga and to be open and flexible enough to letting their yoga evolve with time and experience and not being boxed into a particular Thing. Like some people will be like, I'm only going to do vinyasa for life. Okay, that's it's not practical if I'm being very honest, because we do not take aging into consideration as much as we need to in in uh, and I'm and I'm generalizing in in popular yoga. So just wanted to come in here and share these two approaches. Approach one is about progressively growing your asana practice for people who like to physically challenge them, and we should not judge that. We should not judge that as as something that's inferior to accessible or adaptable yoga. I think adaptability and accessibility of yoga are two different things. They overlap in some ways. I do have an Instagram post about it. I will link it in the show notes for you to go through. But what you want to focus on is adaptability of asana because that's what will serve you. That's what will serve the student. Accessibility is a greater conversation and it's beyond, it's, it's not just for yoga, like it's not only in yoga, it's it's there in other aspects of the world that we live in. But I have a detailed post on this, which I will link out in the show notes. And I will also send this out on my newsletter in case you are curious about this whole adaptability and accessibility conversation and the differences between the two. Okay, so just putting this out there, have these conversations with your students, with yourself, notice where you lie. Okay, because a lot of people tell me, oh, but my asana practice is not advanced enough. And we shouldn't be stuck in these things anymore. Okay, because we're better and beyond that at this point, at least I would hope, in modern day yoga. Okay, so leaving these two approaches for you to, to, to think about, to reflect on. I know some of you reflect and send me notes on Instagram. I enjoy reading all your messages. And uh, I hope this short and slightly random episode makes some sense to you okay i will see you next week with a new episode if not give me a week and i will be back with another guest i'm hoping to do some ayurveda stuff in the week ahead so i will be back here talking to you soon if you enjoy our podcast please show us some support by leaving us a review on apple Podcasts or a rating on spotify it always means the world when you do enjoy the rest of your week i'll see you soon take care bye-bye